The viewpoints expressed on Night Fright are not necessarily those of the host, the staff, the sponsors, or the affiliate stations. Tonight's program may contain graphic themes or images. Viewer discretion is advised. There is a time for question. There is a time for answers. There is a time for challenge. There is a time to speculate. There is a time for change. There is a time for truth. The time is now. We're speaking with Michelle Desrochers tonight, one of my most favorite people in the whole, whole world, Michelle. I always enjoy our talks. Um, it's just incredible. I can talk to you for hours and hours and hours and get something out of it and, uh, and learn so much. She is a researcher. We finally nailed that down. <laughs> <laughs> but she is so much more, folks. Uh, she goes into the deep end of the pool with the demons, and she fights them, and she comes out, and she helps a lot of people in so doing. Uh, we're going to get back to Michelle in just a second. We're going to talk about some of the ghost happenings at Castle Loma, the ghost tour she runs. But first, I'm going to promo. This is for my, uh, my, um, my publisher. I have a book out called The JFK Assassination, From the Oval Office to Dealey Plaza. And it features the last interview with Ted Sorensen, who was JFK's speechwriter and closest aide. As a matter of fact, October 16th was the 52nd anniversary of the uh, missile crisis, the Cuban Missile Crisis. And it was Ted that JFK tasked to write the letter to Khrushchev, otherwise we wouldn't be here. I'm just going to promo these two documentaries I made real quick. One is called uh, First Person Witnesses to the JFK Assassination. The other one is Abraham Bolden the first African-American Secret Service agent. You can get all the stuff, all these uh, documentaries and the book at www.nightfrightshow.com. Uh, first person witnesses, of course, uh, you've got Beverly Oliver, who was in Dealey Plaza that day. you got the doctor who worked on JFK, tells all the true behind-the-scenes stories. And James Take, who has just passed away, so this is historic now, folks. He was the third person wounded in Dealey Plaza that day. Um, he's the reason why they had to invent the magic bullet. They had three bullets to uh, to uh, put shots to, to put wounds to, and all of a sudden James Take came along, and um, he had the fourth wound, and so they had a invent this crazy bullet that zigzagged all over the place. Uh, Abraham Bolden, first African-American Secret Service agent, handpicked by JFK, was not on duty that day, but it was a whistleblower after the assassination. Uh, and he tells about Secret Service cover-up because he was witness to it, how they changed dates and all kinds of stuff to save their own butts, how they were drunk on duty that day instead of protecting the uh, president. And you can see that in some of the pictures and the frames of the uh, Sapruder film as well. When uh, the first shot rings out, nobody moves. Nobody moves. And they should have been on their way, um, bouncing over seats and everything to protect the president. www.nightfrightshow.com. Let's go back to Michelle Desroche now, just as she <laughs> puts her telephone down. I got you. You never I? stop. I plan that. <laughs> That's the demons. They're coming at you. Castle Loma. <laughs> How long have you been doing the, the ghost hunting tours at Castle Loma in Toronto? Uh -huh. Sadly, they're over now, uh, but I did them for five years. Okay. The okay. castle is under new management now, and um, they are a bit of an entertainment conglomerate. So some of the beautiful rooms you see, such as the oak room, is turning into a steakhouse. <laughs> I know. But yes, <laughs> yeah, it says restaurants and entertainment. Um, yeah. Yeah, oh. they've, they've done amazing things with it, but um, it's just it's a little bit different than what most people remember. But we had it for five years, and we I've got so many requests for it right now, and I feel terrible that I'm having to turn 
all these people down, but they're trying to get away from the ghostly stigma being that, um, like I say, they're just all about entertainment and restaurants and food and such. Well, I, I guess I wish them <laughs> luck. Yeah, yeah, boo is right. Uh, I, I'm not happy about this at all. I mean, one of the highlights of my life was taking the ghost tour. I know a lot of people are really unhappy about it. I mean, we were their, their most popular, biggest selling program. You know, folks, it's this big, giant castle virtually in the middle yep. of uh, metropolitan Toronto that yep. was made 1918, 1920. Yeah. Yep. Uh, multiple rooms. Uh, it's been used in multiple <laughs> movies that you've seen. Um, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, it's your typical haunted castle and, and your typical haunted castle but for canadians it's it's very unusual it's because we're cool. kind of you know conservative when it comes to that stuff i, I just found a really beautiful write-up on our program just today actually on TripAdvisor. you know um basically you know happy with the way that i did the program and 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 uh how i mean it was it was huge and i was like wow i'd never seen this before and i was really happy that you know that that person took the time to do it um because she had a really really good time you know i'm sure they're going to invite you back i can't see you know I, <laughs> to me it was a staple <laughs> so, i don't know may not be anything left even the tunnel now it's all different and um, there are cars in the old coach house and yeah it's just all different now yeah uh, well but you can go back during the day and see it anytime the spirits yep. are still there day or yeah, night they won't move they won't nope. move Okay, let's talk about some of your cases that you can talk about without giving any anonymity away. Um, let's dive in right away. Some of your spookier cases, some that you know, some of them that have really upset you and um, really causes you not to sleep at night. I sleep like a baby. <laughs> I'm kidding. I had a nap in the haunted forest in Romania. Nobody naps in the haunted. Let's go to Romania. Let's go to Romania. What? What in the name of God? Were you, were you looking for vampires or what? I'm teasing you now because Dracula's just come out the movie too. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Exceptional film. Um, you know what? I it was kind of a soul searching thing for me. You know, some some things on readings and stuff like that. And it's a place I would want to go. I've traveled many beautiful parts of the world. And Romania has always been on my to-do list. One of my, one of the girls on my staff, a very good friend, um, is Romanian. Her family was in Romania, and we thought, you know what, let's just do it. We went three weeks, went to you know all the castles. Um, I mean, my goodness, you know, we were two weeks behind, or rather, two days behind Ghost Adventures, which was hilarious <laughs> because I mean we were so close together, and uh, the places were just like super active unbelievable i mean i remember being in bran and i stayed in a village in bran just at the base of the castle and fell in love with the mountains it's definitely probably my most favorite place in the world and i always said i will go back and retire there the, the carpathians are just breathtaking um you know romania is surrounded by mountains and you look up at them every day i would wake up and look at these mountains and just think oh my god you know but um Basically, we, we went to all the different places. I was staying at one little inn in Bran. At 6.30 in the morning, I hear something say my name, like a whisper. So I wake up and... So do these things come, like, are they travel? Do they carry on luggage? They just pop in there and go with you or what? Go away, we're going to Romania. <laughs> I know. I was just like, I woke up. And I was like, what the hell was that? <laughs> <laughs> and I look at, at Melissa was my, you know, one of my other friends I was with, and we were, she was sharing a room with me, and I'm like, she's out cold, because I'm ready to pop her one at 6:30 in the morning, like what? You know, I'm barely freaking human at 6:30 in the morning. I'm like more like the things that I go after at that eight, that hour. So anyway, um, she's out cold, and anybody who knows her knows you can't shake her, like it's impossible to wake. So I'm like, what the heck was that? Hmm. Okay, well, that was a cool experience. That was 6.30 in the morning. Um, Castle was just, you know, oh, my goodness. Beautiful architecture, history, amazing. Um, then we went to, um, of course, the forest. The for the so, so, so wait, now, now, any idea who said your name? No clue, just a man. Just some man comes in your room, says your name, wakes you up. Some and... guy was in my room at 6.30. <laughs> <laughs> your husband doesn't know this, I hope. Yeah. Michelle. Just like that. I was like, oh, yes. <laughs> Is that you, Brad? <laughs> <laughs> no, right? 
<laughs> Oops. <laughs> so, yeah, it was interesting. It was interesting. Yeah, it was a good experience. We had many experiences like that in the rooms that we stayed in. We stayed in um, uh, Sigisora, which was um, the alleged birthplace of, of Vlad Dracula. It was, you know, it was his father who basically, um, I guess, created Sigisora. He's the one who founded it. And he's the one who built it. Um, and it's a fortress. It's a small fortress. I mean, from the 13, 1400s. I mean, untouched, beautiful. You know, in many, many ways. And uh, it, it was like crazy active, just ridiculous. You know, you could hear like people walking around <laughs> in the rooms and such. And But I mean, one of my favorites, of course, is the forest. Everybody kept saying, we have to go to the haunted forest. Didn't know a lot about it, just knew that, okay, you know what? I don't want to know everything before I go. You know, I, I saw, you know, Destination Truth had been there. It went badly for them twice. And I'm thinking... It goes badly for that guy I want in, <laughs> you know, <laughs> seriously, throw caution to the wind, off I go. It was like a four kilometer hike to get into here by on foot. So we went early because I wanted to, I want to get my bearings. It was the night of the super moon. Everybody, people are so cute, you know, who want to go in the super moon just for extra activity. I'm like, no, I want to go in on the super moon so I can find my way out <laughs> at 4 a.m. It was lit up the whole forest. It's like logic is what I'm thinking, right? <laughs> so we went in early and going... Did you leave breadcrumbs? Just kidding. Sorry. No, they actually have the trail marked. I guess a lot of people have gone in there. And got lost, I bet. And as I tell you more about the forest, <laughs> yeah, we're glad the trail was marked. But um, you walk in, and one thing we noticed is it was silent. No sound of birds. There was no animals, not even a chipmunk, nothing. Insects, you know, um, quiet, except for a humming noise. The whole forest, all I could hear anywhere that I went was this, it sounded like a droning sound almost. It's creepy. It was bizarre. And I'm thinking, okay, the trees are all crooked, like just crazy. So I'm thinking that in itself was strange, these big crooked trees, you know, bent and just thinking, okay, fine. So we go, you know, we, we had some lunch, and I'm thinking, I'm, we're going to be here for a while before the dark hits. So I had a nap. Like, I wanted, for me, <laughs> I know, right, haunted forest, second most haunted forest in the world. Slept like a baby. <laughs> Perfect. But, Michelle, you're so I, cute. <laughs> I wanted to catch my bearings, actually. I wanted to go silent, and I wanted to feel what was around. And there were people, like spirit people circling, or, you know, circling around, trying to figure out what we're all about. I mean, people camp out in here. It's not like it's completely off limits to people. Okay. You know, I sat there and watched a guy, in, like a gypsy, in his cart and horse and cart go by. It's like, you're on the top of the mountain. I'm going, time warp. <laughs> this is cool. He didn't have a cape <laughs> yeah. around him, did he? No, okay. Yeah, no, no. <laughs> he looked at us, we looked at him, it was like, all right, this is good. Um, but you know what? Like when night hit, it had a totally different feel. I I'm mean, so. Um, this the the droning sound was still there. It was only six ways into the circle. The circle was just flat grass, nothing, nothing else. Um, it was just strange. You could feel, you could feel something, you know, an, an encroachment. If, if a little bit, a little bit, yeah. you know, like. I, I came to learn that it was under no-fly zone. It was known as uh, Romania's Bermuda Triangle. There's a, a, a story where a young girl, apparently it's documented, five years old, disappeared there. Five years later, reappeared there wearing the same thing. Um, you know, there used to be a lake up there 60,000 years ago because, you know, the, the ghost <coughs> box kept picking up on stuff and it kept picking up on the lake and people. And, and upon researching it, this is why I like to find out things after the fact, you know, um, that basically it was, there was a lake up there. And a lot of the residents in the area have hmm. captured photographs of UFOs over top of this, this mountain, this area. Wow. So while we were there, um, one of my girls says, I'm going to do a perimeter walk and do voice recordings. I says, okay. I says, but don't go in that corner. It's, it's just not a good corner. Like, it's very heavy. Um, I think there's just something in the corner. So I know what you did right away, right? As soon as she left, you turned around and went right towards that corner, didn't you? No. no. Well, I sat there and just kept staring at it because I was just I don't want to miss a thing. I'm like, if something's going to happen, I don't want to miss it. 
She did all other five exits first, and she goes, I'm going to do this corner. I went, <laughs> all right. <I'll> go first. <laughs> so she went in, and she goes, she turns around and looks at me. She goes, I'm feeling very heavy in the chest. And, and there were like four of us there. So it's not like it was just her and I. All of a sudden, I hear like cracking, like wood cracking. And right behind her, the tree, okay, the tree goes down like this a little bit and it goes, it pops back up. We're like, and, she, and while she's saying, I'm feeling this heaviness in my chest, the thing pops up. We're like, huh, could you see that? It was insane. So anyway, aside from all that, we're like, I bet you felt heavy in the chest. So she came in, she goes, let's turn the ghost box up. Like, okay, just for fun, let's do it. So we're picking up on it. They're speaking in Romanian at first, and she's Romanian, so that was fine. But then she explained, well, you know, can we also speak in English? Kind of, a bit, that was a bit of an experiment, you know. They say there's no language barrier uh, in the spirit world, and it was kind of a way of testing it. So all of a sudden, the box is yes, and then it says da. Da is yes in Romanian. So we got the both validation. We're like, thank you very much. And then, you know, and they were afraid to speak. And I said, well, if I can kind of settle down what's here, will you continue to speak? And she said, da, yes, okay, fine. So that was all good. You know, I, after all, I think he was just more curious than anything, whatever it was that was there. Mm. So all of a sudden, we're asking it questions. We did have um, the name Vlad the Torturer kind of came through the box. Yep. And we're, I wonder who that was. This, this, this forest is in an area uh, called Cluj. So, it, you know, whether or not he, he went by there at one point or didn't or whether whatever, the box came up and said, Vlad the Torturer, not Impaler, but the Torturer. So that was kind of interesting. That was the only reference that, that, that came through. Um, was that in Romanian? Because maybe that's how that trans, uh, translates. I don't know. I'm just guessing. Um, Adriana seemed to think so. She's Romanian. She says, yes, it could definitely have been. You know, I could tell you more about that on one on one sometime. You'll, it'll blow your mind uh, without, you know, elaborating too much. But... Oh, no, go ahead, please. Please go <laughs> ahead. We might blow our minds. Yeah. Well, some things I can say. Some okay, things... whatever you're more comfortable with, it's okay. <laughs> but um, as we went on, something came through the box and started like this thundering growl. And Adriana kind of got a little bit snarky with it. And we kind of went, that's not good. <laughs> And then all of a sudden, the three of us, while she was still talking, the three of us turned around while she was still doing her thing. And honestly, the tree line looked, appeared to be coming down like, like the trees were coming down. Oh, my God. And I'm sitting there going, um, okay. And I'm like, I think Papa Bear's coming is all I said. <laughs> Whatever it is. Whatever this is. This if you go into the woods today. Yeah, it was crazy. And then all of a sudden, the box said, go, now, run. I'm down! <laughs> Four kilometers in the freaking dark. The light of the full moon. Okay, you could hear something behind us. It was crazy. It oh was my. great. Did it feel malevolent? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's why you didn't stop and offer him a coffee. Is that the idea? <laughs> I know. I'm just like, well, hey, whatever. I, I, I was quite at ease. I just, a little bit, when something in the box goes, go run now. <laughs> Ask questions later. Yeah. Take and them at their word, right? And, and yeah. Okay. Yeah. We went back to the room that night and ended up all of a sudden the phone started just uncontrollably ringing. Went down, you know, asked the front desk. Nothing was going on. <laughs> okay. Footsteps and yeah. Just Any like idea that. the history of what happened in that particular place on the mountain? Maybe there was a mass murder or something by Vlad. You know what? Who knows? There's more UFO stories that come out of that than anything else. So some mm -hmm. believe that there's a vortex on the mountain. There's a gateway. Okay. And anything, you know, it comes back to that theory, you know, where you're getting your your reptilian race UFOs, things yeah. like that. Is that hence demon? Is that, like, there's so many different alleged races of... of um, you know, ETs and so on, it has to make you wonder what exactly is coming in there. If it's under a no-fly zone, kind of got to wonder. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of a red flag in itself. What do you think about the reptilians? Are they uh, an extraterrestrial race? Are they demons? Are they both? Well, you know, is, isn't that interesting? 
again, you know, I've had theorists say to me, you know, with the whole vampire thing, right. like folklore starts somewhere, yeah. you know, and whether it be, you know, vampires and, you know, wolf people, I'll tell you a story about wolf people. Well, you're going to go, what? I'm going to write that down, folks, so I don't yeah. forget. The JFK Assassination, the definitive book by Brendan Holland. From inside the Oval Office to Davy Plaza, first-person witness accounts. Order yours right now. Nightfrightshow.com. You want to hear this one. You want to hear this one. But could it be, hypothetically, people? I'm always saying hypothetically because I have people from all walks of life trying to, you know, we, that where you get to kind of bounce ideas back and forth, right? And is it possible that? that these hence vampires, wolf people, um, the reptilian race, the demons, are they an extraterrestrial race that mm. come through this doorway? When this folklore started and these sightings started, it could it be that these, these beings came to be you know, vampires, for example, could very easily over time in mating with humans or... Very good point. That, you know, you become a little bit more... A little bit more humanized, I suppose. Mm -hmm. Theory, of course, but I don't know. Like, it's all theory at this point. It's just, you know, I don't know. Well, that I've, would make sense. I've just investigated many things, you know, mm -hmm. in, in the many years that I've done it. And I now I sit back and I go, maybe. <laughs> maybe. Maybe there's a connection there after all. Maybe. I've had three cases that I've done, only three in all the years that, mm -hmm. that I've done this, where um, an alleged alleged demonic um, infestation, mm -hmm. where uh, vortexes were found on the premises with this droning sound. And on one of those occasions, um, there was a, a picture, it looked like a gray that was captured in their basement. It's a silhouette, but you, you know, you kind of see, mm -hmm. you could faintly see the eyes, just faintly. And apparently it wasn't photoshopped. I, I, I remember sending it off to a friend of mine at the time. Mm -hmm. I was affiliated with a guy who worked with Cambridge University. And he did a lot of this on the side. And, um, you know, he couldn't find anything with the picture. He worked with like an infrared right. program, I guess, to try to filter through photographs to find, you know, uh, natural natural reasons for things. Like whether this is a natural, is it a camera strap? No. Or is it is this or this? And he couldn't figure out what this thing was. He was just kind of like... Maybe again, if it comes back to the question mark, I'm like, well, okay, it warrants a little bit more mm. looking into. It's not a definitive by any means, but it was it was interesting. Interesting, so, interesting word to use, absolutely. Now, when when you come across a photograph like this, does that validate what you're feeling? I don't think there's any validation. I don't think there'll ever be any validation with paranormal of anything. But mm. um, again, it leaves me. It leave if there's a question mark on it, it tells me that. It requires further research, hmm. you know. It, it, it's not a dead end. I don't like dead ends. So when something comes up and it's, it's, it, you know, you're like, no, you can delve into this a little bit more. You might find something else. I like it. I like it when it's unexplainable. How long does it take you to clear a house, generally speaking? I've heard many people say it's just not a one-shot deal. You have to go back several times. I, I don't clear houses at all. I, I refuse to do it. I mean, I won't say I refuse to do it. I've made the exception. Um, it's hit and miss. <laughs> Sometimes you can get them to work with you. Other times it's like, who are you to try to do this? It's, it's okay. you know, I, I put it off to people who who um, specialize in that. I, I work with a lady um, a couple of years back. I don't know if she still does it or not. I, I've, my schedule's become so busy that I've had to put a lot of my case loads or requests on hold. But she used to do what's called remote dousing. I guess it's like a remote viewing sort of thing. Yeah. I don't know how she did it. Um, sometimes she could do it in one shot. Other times it would take her two, three times. I've seen her go four or five times of popping in and just staying right on it. Um, she said it would depend on circumstances, like how many places that this thing kind of like attached to. Because if you just go here, if you you know, she had to kind of, she had to know every place that was having an issue that revolved around this place so she could get them all because if this thing would just go over here and the people would go here or here and it could reattach it would just kind of go around full circle um she never charged for her services all that she asked was that she be kept that it was done anonymously you know because she was a nurse and she worked um 
you know, she worked, um, you know, the, the night shift, so to speak. And she's like, just ask that because I do it for free, I don't want to get inundated. Um, but I'm happy to help. There was myself and probably a handful of other researchers who she helped. Successfully, she maybe did 80% success rate out of the one out of the, the people that I sent her. Never had to step foot in the place. You know, and people, oh my God, I used to get so much flack. Well, you can't do that. That's ridiculous. Well, how do you know? What are you the profession? Are you, are you the expert on, on this and that? You know, I know you think you're the expert, but you know, there are no experts in this field, sort. <laughs> but I don't pretend to know how she did it as long as, again, it was done in a positive way, that there was no expense to the, the individuals, that it helped in one way or another. Perfect. That's all I cared about. Perfect. Creepiest place you've come across, a place that you may not want to return to. There's not one I would not ever return to. Okay. What's um, the most infested? I head like that. <laughs> so. Is infest, would infested be the right word? What was the most haunted place you came across, the most evil? You know, I don't even know, per se, if it's evil, as it was, everything fights for its space. You right. know, I remember doing a mansion on Lake Huron back in 2006, 2007, <clears throat> and it was unbelievable. <laughs> That's the thing I used to call my house. Um, I would have experiences there each and every single time I went. We filmed ET Canada there back, I think it was February of 06, um, and even the ET crew, I mean, things were going on at 12 o'clock in the afternoon. Um, you know, for example, water was turned off in the place. That place had been winterized, so they, they turned the water off. I do a walkabout whenever I, I, I walk into a location. I try to get a feel for the place, you know, before I, I, I start um, filming. You know, you don't want to look like a total doofus on camera, you know. So, okay, get my bearings. <laughs> and um, uh, everything was cool. We go around the ET crew. We're rolling. And we get to the upstairs washroom. There's water everywhere. I mean, on the ceiling, the floor. I mean, everywhere. And the owner's scratching her head going, I don't know where it came from. I was with you guys. The water's turned off. I'm like, okay. That was one, one thing. Um, other stuff was, it used to be a restaurant. So there's, a, there's an internal sound system that goes through the whole building. It comes on. You know, 12 o'clock in the afternoon, the thing shoots on. Remember, everything is winterized and shut down. Mm -hmm. They asked if I wanted heat. I said, I don't want heat. I don't want any power. Keep it off. I want this to be just natural, right? And the sound system goes off. I watched her husband break into one room that was locked to try to shut it off. And he's scratching his head. And he goes, nothing's plugged in. I'm like, oh, oh. my God. Worst now, thing it hurt was Frank Sinatra. I was freaking like, it's like somebody kill me, please. <laughs> head banger, right? Somebody you see, now for me, that would have been one of those, you know, leave now, it's dangerous moments. That no, no, would have been me. It just got it just got better. Well, I was being interviewed with ET in one room. I had seven people, seven, in another room, which was the billiard room, which once upon a time used to be the old barn area. Right. Okay. Now it's a billiard room because the house had been added on to. Okay. It was a funeral home. <laughs> awesome. Anyway, um, <laughs> you know, you know how to pick them, Michelle. <laughs> have you seen my house? I talk to you about my funeral collection. Anyway. So, we can do that after for sure and I haven't forgot about wolf people either home. <laughs> but, but anyway, they had a big screen TV there that was unplugged I come out I've got seven people one being my sister who is not a teller of tall tales she came along with me because she loved ET Canada and I, and I said do you want to be on ET Canada okay I'm down so she, she became I put her on staff so she could be on ET Canada. She was not into the paranormal at all. So I've got her standing there with a parabolic looking like she's doing something. And I come back and she looks at me and she goes, I need to get out of this house. Seriously. I've got, like again, seven people. One is my own camera guy who's supposed to be filming all of this crazy stuff going on because he's supposed to be doing a premiere for us. Sure. A hired camera guy. He's standing there frozen in fear. I'm going, what, what's going on? Something walked, like it was in the screen, walked out, stopped like this, turned around and went, 
like this. Oh. Seven people said it had little horns. This is it's been captured on camera in my time there. Someone sent me a photo of it while they were there behind me <laughs> of all places. Anyway, um, so and it turned around and it looked and then it stood back and it walked out. So I'm sitting there and I look at my camera guy and I go, and you did get this. <laughs> you didn't get this. What the heck am I paying you for? <laughs> wow. Yeah. So this place just amazed me for the full two to three years that I worked there. Wow. Never a time I've been there where something didn't happen. I, I, I just always said, you know, because I became very, like friends with the owner, I said, I don't want it to be about this house. I never brought equipment with me after that. Okay. It was just like, no, I'd just come in and hang out. We'd go for lunch, hang at the beach, <laughs> get to the house, stuff would be happening. It'd be like, <laughs> it just won't stop. <laughs> you know? it, it was amazing. It was really amazing. Do you think um, they put on a little performance because you're there? I, I don't know. Michelle's here. Michelle's here. Yeah, yeah mm -hmm. apparently, you know, I've had psychics say that, you know, things kind of pep up when, when I come around. And maybe it's because I'm very spirit friendly, probably more than I am people friendly. But um, I remember she had, a, she had a two and a half year old granddaughter and she would come running to me on a couple of occasions and she'd want to be picked up and I'd pick her up and she'd point there and she would bury her face in me. And I'd say, oh, I says, there's something scary there. And she'd go, yeah, she'd hold on to me. And I'd say, well, show me. You know, and she'd go, yes, it's over there. <laughs> you know, she kept pointing. Like, okay. Oh, my God. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, it was crazy. It was the JFK Assassination, the definitive book by Brent Holland. From inside the Oval Office to Davy Plaza, first person witness accounts for yours right now. Nightfrightshow.com. Amazing. What is it about kids and demons, you know, yeah, invisible friends, that type of thing? Uh, is it their innocence, uh, their naivety that the demons get gravitated towards that area? I, yeah, I think maybe they haven't been corrupted by life yet, you know. <laughs> animals animals, and children apparently see everything. Mm. And um, there were spirit children there. And sometimes, um, you know, the owner would say, you see her just like she's running around playing, like with other, like she's interacting. And we knew there were at least two, at least two other children in that house, spirit children. And she just looked like she was playing. And sometimes she'd argue with them, no, you're not going to do that. I want to do that. And just like, she was, oh, God. They set up a playroom mm -hmm. in the house for when she'd come to visit. And there were some toys that were there specifically that was made clear that these were for the spirit children. And she goes, and you'd find them moved around. You'd get up in the morning and they were moved around. And there was nobody, nobody overnight playing with them. So you find yeah. that all the time www.nightfrightshow.com folks we're speaking with michelle de rocher tonight um she runs canada's most haunted burlington ghost walks uh, all kinds of things she does incredible researcher you can find her links there www.nightfrightshow just click on them and they'll take you right to her website um any chance you're going to put out a book or anything like that one day my memoirs my memoirs me and yeah. bezel bub <laughs> I have been asked. I have been asked many Good. times. Um, I had somebody approach me offering to co-write with me, and uh, maybe in the future okay. I can write about it. It might be like more of a comedy show than anything else. <laughs> you know, I, I really take all of this um, with a grain of salt. I take it seriously really? when I have to do it. Hmm. I, I don't let it consume me. You okay. know, I, I, I have I have my family. I've got. You know, I travel so much. I, I just, I mean, my God, there's stuff everywhere, seriously. And um, I just made the choice along the line to not let it consume my entire life. When I am, when, when somebody brings me on and I accept to do, um, you know, to do a location, I am 100% serious. But a lot of it is of my, my light, I guess, as I say, is um, it helps it helps to, I guess, make people, empower people, you know, yeah. because if I go in there all serious, seriously, and like, oh, scared, and you know, I'm not empowering this person. I go in there, and I make them feel like they can take on the world, and I teach them how to. Many of the cases that I've done, never had a problem with after that, because those people refuse to be victims anymore, and I taught them how to not be victims. 
Because sometimes it really is up here. There could be all kinds of stuff going on. I don't mean that, no, you're not haunted. But how you handle it, yes. a lot of time is up here. If you want to be a victim, I'm going to teach you how to not be a victim. Do they feed off fear? Do demons feed off the fear? They right. do, right? Yeah, absolutely. They want to keep you that way. That's like terrorists. They just want to terrorize for the sake of, that's who they are, right? They're terrorists. Exactly. exactly. Wolf people. Let's talk about wolf people. Oh, wow. That came, I found out about this story maybe three years ago. It's relatively new for me. I had met a woman, and I talked to a friend of mine who had met somebody, mm -hmm. he had heard the same story from some, but a different individual. I met a woman who grew up in the Guelph area. As a child, they lived on a farm, she lived with her grandparents, and on the, the edge of the farm was a forest. And her grandmother used to tell her, do not go into the forest because the wolf people are there. So she always thought, oh, I thought it was a story that my grandmother said to get me out of the forest, right? Just so you wouldn't get lost, right? Yeah, that's exactly. what you tell a kid, you know? Exactly. Yeah. She, she got older. And when she was a young teen, she remembers being close to the edge of the forest. And when she looked, she saw what appeared to be large wolves walking on their hind legs. Oh, my God. Now, this same woman went to a psychic fair, had a reading. And it, she, was, she went to this, this medium because this medium was from Guelph. So the medium starts reading her and she goes, you've seen them. And she, and she goes, what? She goes, the wolf people. She goes, I've seen them as well. Like, what the hell is that? <laughs> what is that about? I don't know. But, I mean, with digging, I had one of my researchers uh -huh. dig up some stories. And he found some links. I went, okay, good. Now I want to start, like, they've, they've, sent, they've sent me a couple of links. And I want to start reading up on it a little bit. Because that's, that's like 45 minutes away from me. Like, I'm all over that. If they've got that there. But it's, just, it's one of these things. It's like... What is Where going does this on? Come from yeah. and the folklore thing, like yeah, they walk up right. Some kind of connection. Linda Godfrey was on the show. She's written a book called "We're." Um, oh my goodness, I'm going to destroy the name of the book. The show's there in the archives, folks. It's uh, "We're Wolves." We'll, we're uh, wolf men or something along those lines. And she, what it is, is real accounts of people that have seen the exact creature you've just described. And as I'm saying this, I'm getting goosebumps. Because obviously this is not an isolated case and there's something to it. Well, and, to have it so close. Oh, yeah. You know, I, I had a gentleman, I get messages on like emails and Facebook messages like unbelievable, you know. And this one guy sent me a photo of himself. And he said, he goes, I'm a wolf person. And he goes, and this, here's, a, here's a picture of me someone took shifting. And, and you could see, like, his eyes weren't right, and, and there, was, there just seemed to be this vibration. And I'm going, you know, I don't ever send things off to be analyzed without permission. Like, I'm respectful that way, but, I mean, I question it because I'm like, oh, it's just shaky camera. But then I look at the eyes, and I'm thinking, oh, that doesn't look right, <laughs> you know. But, I mean, it just makes you wonder, like, is it possible? Yeah, anything is possible. But I respect people's privacy, you know, that way. But... You know, I've had people message me claiming, I and mean, everybody claims to be vampire nowadays, but, you know, wolf wolf people. But mm -hmm. there's, there are Facebook groups that unless you are literally part of a true, what they deem to be a true vampire community, you know, they will not accept you in there. Wow, I didn't know that either. The JFK Assassination, the definitive book by Brent Holland. From inside the Oval Office to Davy Plaza, first-person witness accounts. Order yours right now. Nightfrightshow.com You know, it's, it's funny. Um, you mentioned all this lore, and I think the First Nation folks have had shapeshifters forever. They've yes, been talking they have. about. Um, yeah. So there, obviously there's something there because these are things that transverse right across the, the various uh, seas all around the world. Jane Goodall was saying that. She said um, when I had her on the show, uh, the Brent Holland show, another show I do, folks, and you can find the, the archives and all that. She believes in Bigfoot for this very same reason. Now, she's never seen one. I should qualify that. But all the various Aboriginal people that she's worked with all have a similar story. Mm -hmm. about this big upright creature that's furry. It's not an ape. It's not a human being. Mm -hmm. 
uh, walks upright, smells, uh, makes loud crashing oh, sounds. They found um, hair samples that they tested that claimed that they were not, that wasn't like animal at all, nor was it um, like human of sorts. It was mm -hmm. like they, they've not seen this before. So there you go. You know, we're getting closer and closer. And for somebody like Jane Goodall to come out exactly. and validate the fact that these legends are, are real. Um, and, you know, this is recent stuff, folks. I mean, these people that come up to our aboriginals tell her about these stories. And they're not talking about 100 years ago. They're talking about last week or yesterday. Yeah. So oh. there's something to it. Um, what is the number one mistake novices make? when they're doing ghost hunting um it, it's become almost a a weekend pleasure trip if you will for a lot of people who go out ghost hunting um i think there's some inherent dangers with that as well mm -hmm. you know the, the, there's another movie coming out called ouija mm -hmm. does that invite bad things into your life if you're just going well, out as a novice ouija i i just filmed a, a clip with much music that's going to be shown when that that show comes out through much music on the release day so i hope it's not too much in a bad light <laughs> canada's version of mtv by the way folks <laughs> um much you music. know what i believe it's it's like it's like anything else if, if you're if you take an unlicensed driver put them behind the wheel of the car it's going to go bad <laughs> um some mediums will tell you that they i mean I, I personally wouldn't have a problem using it i wouldn't endorse it at all but it's like anything you can take a tape recorder the ghost mm. box uh an ovulus, anything that invites a method of communication, you know, pendulum. I mean, I've done a case, one, a case that I did came from communicating with a pendulum and not knowing what comes in. A medium will know what comes in, okay. you know, um, but if you're inviting something to come forth and communicate with you, you don't know what it is, you're sort of taking their word for it. And a lot of what I call bottom dwellers, anything that needs help, that's <laughs> what usually comes through. Um, mm. If it's a good spirit, it won't need that kind of help. It could just come through. Um, so realistically, you know, they sell these things all over the place, you know, it's like anybody can get their hands on it, but I think it's just inviting that communication. It really is a careful what you wish for situation. It doesn't matter whether it's the Ouija board or any other form of communication. You don't even need an actual board. Like, there's so many ways that you can do it. Have you ever had anything follow you home? Many times. <laughs> As you know. <laughs> Besides Brad. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Many times. Yeah. How do you deal with that? Uh, it really depends on the energy. Um, okay. You know, I mean, I got the really, my, I know it's one of your favorite stories, but I mean, I remember this mansion that I worked at. I came home and middle of the night, I wake up going, ha! Oh. It was just this like ball of light just flying around the room, you know? I'm just like zinging about and I'm like. I love this story, oh. folks, by the way. Wait till you hear this. I, I was all excited, right? My husband at the time gets up and goes, what are you doing? It's like, oh, there's this ball of light flying around the room. He stops, he stares at me, and he goes, for Pete's sakes, Michelle, do you think you could just stop bringing your work home? I was like, well, was not our breakfast? You know, yeah, stuff like that, pretty random. Poor guy's been through some issues with stuff coming in the house, you know. Probably definitely had to rethink the why am I here bit. <laughs> like, what am I getting myself into? But yeah, many things, many things coming through. And my daughter woke me up one time when I worked a case, and she's very clairaudient. And she came up to me one night and just starts poking on my shoulder. And I wake up, one eye open, I'm like, what, what, what? And she says, I have something to tell you. I'm like, well, for Pete's sakes, can I not wait till morning? It's 3 30 in the morning, right? She goes, I don't think so. I'm like, okay, what's the message? And I had just been to this house that day. And she said, you can't help her, Michelle, is what, what the message was. And I'm going, oh. I said, Andrea, I said, tell me what the voice sounded like. Because earlier that day after when I spoke with the client, I said, what does the voice sound like to you? She goes, a soothing, a big, soothing black man's voice very deep and soothing. And I said, Andrew, what does it sound like? She, she goes, oh, like sexy Samuel Jackson, she said. <laughs> I'm like, I'll take that as a soothing black man's voice. <laughs> he was like, you know, like 15 at the time, right? Uh, 
yeah, my family now, I tell you. But so I went, okay, well, that's interesting. I feel sometimes they come around to kind of push their weight around. They try to scare me off sort of thing. I, I find it very personal when they name me. It, it's, it's very personal. And I think it's meant to be personal. They name you? Well, that's what he said. You can't help her, Michelle. He says, oh, my that's name. right. It's personalizing it, and that bothers me a little bit. But I just get up there, and I was I was doing um, a conversation with this man in the one time, and he used to come through the phone. I I would just literally I would put my recorder, throw the speaker phone on, and she always talked to a cordless phone. The stuff that came through would just blow your mind. Hours of the stuff, and um, my son walked in. My youngest son walked in. Mm-hmm. And there's no way anybody would have known. He came in very, very quietly because he knew the great stuff would come to the phone when I would be on the phone. So he sat down on my bed, and then all of a sudden, in this growly voice, it says, Brandon will die. My mother bear comes out and says, what did you just say? The sarcastic little SOB says, Brandon will die. Like this. Brandon's going... What did I just say? Well, I just let go of you. <laughs> you know, just yeah. Well, Mama instantly. Bear for sure. Well, I, I couldn't believe it. Like it's just like that is as personal as you can make it. Right there, my kids. Yeah, that's I eat you up and chew you up and spit you out and do it all over again <laughs> like it comes to my kids seriously ultimately do they have any power over us that we don't give them um i think they only have power if you allow it i yeah. don't allow it ever ever like i have rules you know you come into the house i have rules the upper level is off limits i've had things come into the house i feel them come in and again mm-hmm. from this one location i remember waking up one night i'm just like and I come downstairs, and there's something sitting in the corner, and in our big, we have a big leather lazy boy chair at the time, and I hear this raspy like, look loud. It was just this crazy. It's like you, you think just outside of a movie, you know? Yeah. Sat down, and I'm thinking, you know, it's not that I'm, I fear nothing, you know what I mean? But I just, I don't show it. I was, I was taught not to. I mean, that comes back, says back to my grandfather. Remember, grew up with this. He helped me through that a lot. You know, my, my parents, my father didn't want to hear it. My mother was just like, oh, my God. <laughs> you, know, what the heck? you know, she was very good about it. You know, she'd get mad and she'd, she'd tell it off every now and then. But, but I mean, I, I really learned how to how to self-preserve. Um, so I just sat down and I looked in the corner. I could see an outline of something. And it got quiet. So I stood up and I said, that's why you woke me up. I got up, I came back towards the staircase. I said, don't let the door hit you on the way out. Mm. And I went back up to bed. And all of a sudden, I heard this this loud, like a big popping, like a, just like it just was gone. It was so loud. And I'm thinking, oh, my God, the whole house would have, must have gotten woken up. I heard a thing. I'm just like, yeah. So, wow. yeah, I think they're, they're empowered if you allow it. And that's the only way, I guess, that they can come in and things of that nature. Well, it can come in many different ways if it if it wants to bad enough, but I think how far it gets. The JFK Assassination, the definitive book by Brendan Holland. From inside the Oval Office to Davy Plaza, first person witness accounts. Order yours right now. Nightfrightshow.com. What are they looking for when they when they say, Okay, let's go get this little kid or let's go get this person? Is there something in particular? Kids are naive, you know. I I think um, the theory is is that they tend to go after the weakest link as Mm. well. You know, kids are that. Um, They fear easily. Um, They make the invitation very easily. You know, Mm. they invite them in very easily because they can be fooled into thinking it's a little child, etc. So with that, that happening, I think that's why they get targeted the most is because they can get in easier. You know, what are they looking for? Again, it's all theory. Scare yeah, it's all theory. Are they, you? are they after your soul? Yeah, who knows? You know, who knows? Some people think that demons show up as little kids, but with yeah. always some kind of maybe an eye missing or an arm missing or something along those lines. 
Uh, sometimes they just show up as playmates. Um, that happened with my one case. And I had to kind of, I mean, obviously they say you need to rescind the invitation. Well, it's very hard. How do you explain that to a child, what they've mm. done? I had to have them rescind an invitation because he had a little playmate. And, and he was okay with this little boy at first. And then it started to scare him after a while. And that's when he confessed to his mother what was going on. And that's usually how it starts. They start getting very bossy and demanding uh, of the child, right? And um, basically, um, I, I came in and I said, okay, I've got to use reverse psychology without scaring the child. Mm. So I just said, well, did you ask your mommy if he can come over? And the, and the little guy said, no. He says, so you invited him over. Did he ask his mommy? He goes, I don't know. And I says, oh, well, there, that's two things that are wrong. <laughs> I, said, I said, his mommy's been looking for him. I think you need to tell him to go home and not come back unless you ask your mom. Because you get out of here and go home. Your mom's looking for you. And and um and then the mom mom played along and just you know she says no he can't come over anymore. She asked me first, and then then that was that that solved that part of it. But unfortunately by this time something else had attached. Almost like they were they're in pairs or something, you know. But the one went through and you could see then it, it just it didn't even come back to the house. But you could see that it was according to a lot of the mediums that it was just kind of outside. But, you know, there was definitely another one that had also taken root, for sure. Can you tell us about the other one? Which one? The one that was in the house is the one that it took us a year to get rid of. The other one that that came in that had taken root, the second well, one. It came in at some point while this one was there. Huh. You know, you, you hear the theory where you will hear um, often the comment of Legion, where there's more than one. You know, it could be anywhere from, like, you know, one to six or more, apparently. And um, this one there, there were a couple there and that's the one like that i had actually got on recording like growling on the recording because that was about i got that recording probably a few days after my initial visit where i had already popped the other one out how'd you, know? you get rid of the growling one it, well that's the one i had to have the um that yeah, organization okay. that the the christian yeah. church came in and did that one literally 11 and a half months later wow <clears throat> it took that long to get them you know, but I was dealing with a family that was, he was Muslim and she was of Christian faith, mm. you know, and um, we opted for the Christian uh, because they had the organization that was willing to come in and they took it very seriously and they, they went at it and whatever it is they did, it worked. <sighs> whatever it takes to empower the family and a lot of times if it's having their faith behind them to help them achieve that, I'm all for it, you know. Yeah, Absolutely. Uh, it's a good thing that you were there to help them out with their question. Michelle Desrochers, folks, what can I tell you? She's a legend. She here in Canada, Canada's most haunted. Uh, Burlington Ghost Walks, uh, she'll help you out. Uh, her uh, contact information, www.nightfrightshow.com. Just click on the links associated with tonight's guest, and that'll take you right to her website. Don't forget her groups as well. Uh, Kelly Logue, I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart for helping out and putting the uh, the website together week after week. Here's a, a guy that deserves more recognition than uh, I give him for sure, because without him putting the website together for me, I, I just couldn't do it. I couldn't do the show. And it just wouldn't be up, and it's as simple and simple as that. And uh, he does up in Juneau, Alaska, by the way, folks. We've wow. never met. And uh, he just does it out of the goodness of his heart. So there are good people out there, uh, and it's up to you to find them and go with that. What's next for you? What are you working on right now? Can you tell us? Can you give us a bit of a hint? I'm going back to Romania, of course. Yeah, that'll be uh, the plan is to go back in the spring. Um, on like a I case. Said, um, yeah, I'm gonna. I'm going back to tackle a couple of locations up there. The forest being one of them. Can you give Can us a it? little bit of what you're looking for? Or um, entices? well, I, I got to watch Ghost Adventures after that, and you know, and Zach had his little traumatic experience. <laughs> so I want to go back, and and I just want to. I want to delve further into it. This whole demon ET thing. I want to stay there for a few days and a few nights. And Sleep in the I, forest again? Yeah, but this time overnight for a few days. Yeah, I want, I want to say. Um, there's been talk of possibly, I mean, the team really wants to tackle the suicide forest in Japan. 
Um, I've got a team member right now who's in Europe for the next year, and she wants to do tours. So I'm looking at possibly um, working with her on bringing doing international tours. What's the suicide forest in Japan? I haven't heard. Most of haunted forest they say in the world, and it's where people go to die and commit suicide. Yeah. So the energy there must be just Astronaut. all over the place. Yeah. All over the place. Absolutely. You never know when you walk in yeah. what you're going to find. Like it happens so regularly there. I, I'm i just curious. Have you ever been to the uh, the site of the Twin Towers? No. Nah, I've been. I just came back from uh, the Flight 93 crash site. Ooh. What's the energy like there? It's very, very heavy. Um, yeah. Use what the have while I was there. Just, again, it's just one of these pieces of equipment that might work for you, might not. Um, it was interesting because it kept coming up with, with this one name and um, for the, it, it eludes me at the moment. And That's okay. part, of, part of it also is, is just because, you know, this person has family. Um, and I couldn't find on the, on the passenger list this person's name, but it was a person's middle name. And it was a gentleman. And I'm thinking, okay, well, now that's interesting. And then it kept basically saying, um, what did it say? Nine, three, four, four. Michelle, there's the music we got to wrap up. Damn. It's only one thing. You got to come back on, babe. Thank you so much for helping out tonight. I'm Brent Holland from Night Fright. See you all soon. Take care, everybody. Inside the Oval Office to Davy Plaza. First person witness accounts. Order yours right now. Nightfrightshow.com.